Hi, I'm Bill Wilt of Assured Research. Thanks so much for joining this uh, short video where we're going to focus on a mid-January Assured comment that we released. Assured comments, for those who aren't subscribers, are one-page uh, research notes we produce, oh, call between 20 and 22 per year, um, focused on specific topics. Are quite honestly, among our uh, among our most popular uh, research products, people seem to like uh, just the one page and focused uh, notes. So we're going to keep doing more of those. Um, if you're not a subscriber, reach out to us. We'd be happy to put you on a trial. If you are, hopefully you enjoyed the note. If you've already read it, this will maybe help put some. Um, uh, add to your understanding hopefully of what the points we were trying to convey um, it's on the pricing cycle and um, what we can share is that it, at a couple of um, a couple of industry conferences in the, the latter part of 2023 um, taking a step back pricing cycle lots of executives seem to now be in in a place where they're kind of debating or arguing anyway for the for an extension of the pricing cycle which we understand and and don't disagree that um uh that there's a valid debate on how long it will continue um but the focus here or among executives that we're addressing um has been that uh the investment strategies differing investment strategies by company could extend the pricing cycle specifically the idea uh, as presented was that companies uh during the era of pre-pandemic era of lower for longer interest rates um, that companies some companies really extended their duration maybe went down the uh, of their investment their fixed income uh, portfolio maybe also uh, went lower uh, in terms of credit quality to try to pick up some yield but the, with a focus on uh, extending their duration to pick up some extra yield the idea is that with interest rates having gone back up those same companies that extended their duration would be reluctant to sell those bonds at a loss and therefore crystallize a uh, a, a book value loss that right now is an, an unrealized uh, an unrealized loss so the idea is that they would be reluctant to sell those bonds uh of longer duration crystallize a book value loss but do so because they could then reinvest at uh, at the, the now much higher uh, interest rates. Um, that's the theory uh, that those that those extend those duration extenders, let's call them, would be reluctant to do that, and therefore to keep pace with the ROE of other companies in the industry, that they will need to pull the only lever they then have available to them, which is insurance pricing. And the the idea goes that by doing that, that provides cover for other insurers to keep their pricing uh, elevated and extends the pricing cycle. We're not so sure about that. So let me share with you the, uh, the uh, one graph in this comment. And whoops, pardon me, there we go. Okay, good. So share this with you and let me turn it uh, full screen. Good. So let's look. Let's look on the left. Um, we're able to get uh, pleasantly here the reported, self-reported duration of fixed income investment for portfolios across what is here about 18 companies. Um, we usually use, try to use a cohort of publicly traded companies that measures closer closer to 30. But not too surprisingly, not all companies report duration. It's a, a non-gap disclosure. Um, and so it can be a bit sporadic in, in, you know, as we go back in time. But 18 companies were consistent reporters of duration. Um, and on the left, that the kind of gets to the caption here, supports the caption. Duration, duration strategies are surprisingly insensitive to yields. Um, look back century to date, 23 years, and uh, you see that the both the median and the average duration, pick your, uh, your your preference, very close to four years, call it three and a half to four years, and it's relatively insensitive to yields. It didn't, it didn't go up. So in contrast to that theory that I shared with you, um, the uh, the average or median duration didn't really rise even uh, during the era of lower for longest, lower for longer interest rates uh, in the pre-pandemic uh, era. Um, and if we turn to the right hand side if we look at the just the the again 
self-reported uh, durations by year from 2012 to 22, the third quarter of 2023, and just look at the the max for each company, the maximum uh, duration, the highest it's been, and the minimum duration, the lowest it's been. Um, the point is, you don't see a big, you don't, not only do you not see dramatic swings and the average change is around one year uh, in duration. So that is a company might have at its maximum had a 4%, uh, or excuse me, a four year duration minimum over this uh, 11 or 12 year period was uh, three years. So that difference would be one. So not only is that not all that big, um, but there's not a whole lot of variation across companies. And we've got a couple of companies on the left-hand side there that maybe manage the duration of their portfolio, certainly more aggressively, you might say, than companies on the far right-hand side of that graph. But um, overall, we'd say this isn't, we suggest is not a dramatic uh, shift, call it more tweaking of the, uh, of the investment uh, duration and profile. Um, notable and not shown here is that if you look at, um, extend this back to the period of two, uh, starting in 2000, there you begin to do, you, you do begin to see more meaningful changes between the maximum and minimum duration. Um, the takeaway is that in the era before the, the lower for longer interest rates between the financial crisis and the pandemic, in that first decade 12 or so of, of the 2000s, there did seem to be more active management of the investment portfolio. So that's what we had for you. It basically, you know, we don't oftentimes go out and try to, you know, support or or, or directly support or refute, you know, theories that are being floated about, uh, um, say, the pricing cycle in this case. Um, but it caught our ears uh, as uh, one we hadn't heard before as to what could extend the pricing cycle. That is the extended the duration extenders needing to use the pricing lever because they, you know, weren't going to benefit to the same degree as other companies from rising investment income. Uh, that caught our attention, and uh, we suggest the data doesn't support uh, doesn't support that theory. Which isn't to say the pricing cycle is uh, is going to end, but uh, we think you have to look for uh, to inflation, economic and social inflation, and catastrophes probably as uh, the factors that will uh, more meaningfully influence the pricing cycle in 2024. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, notes available to you if you're a subscriber. Reach out to us for a trial if you're not a subscriber and you want uh, more information like this. So listen, thanks again, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.